Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be continuing with our series of mistakes that you're making on every hero. Today we're going to be looking at mistakes that people are making on Tracer. All right, I don't think it'll be three uh, like Ana and Zarya were if I'm remembering properly, but we're going to see some mistakes that people are making. Uh, probably going to be a little bit higher. Tracer is a very, very important character to know in nearly any meta. She's either dominating the meta or she's completely like uh, niche, which means that she can actually be played in a lot of situations. You know, niche characters can always be strong because no one knows how to play around them. Um, so, you know, char a character like Tracer is just always great to know. She's never mediocre, you know, like Soldier is. Like, Soldier is a rough, a rough hero to know. Uh, just because he, you know, you're very rarely getting enough value out of him. Like, everybody knows how to play around him, but he's not necessarily carrying. So he's not going to carry you throughout the ranks when he's when, when he is playable. Um, but Tracer does not suffer from this flaw. So I think the first mistake that we're going to look at is actually from the enemy Tracer here. But I think it's, I think it's important regardless. Uh, because it's going to be how you take Tracer duels. Um, the most important thing with taking a Tracer duel is understanding that, is understanding that, in general, pushing into space is harder than uh, than having your space pushed into and defending it, right? So Enemy Tracer makes this exact mistake. Um, well, first of all, Enemy Tracer also just doesn't really shoot. This actually isn't a terrible setup, right? The Enemy Tracer just needs to shoot, like, now, right? And just ne needs to get the jump on, on Night Owl right now. Um, however, that is okay. Um... Here, though, this is where the issue arises. You know, Zapper also could have just completely just sat here and chilled, right? And then just gone for a different setup, you know, try to punish this uh, at some point. But instead, now, now the enemy tracer has made the mistake, right? And don't worry, we're going we're gonna to watch our friend Night Owl make this mistake right after. But bringing the duel to Night Owl, when Night Owl knows that he's here, is, is already dis disadvantageous. But what's even more important to understand is that there's no reason for Zapper to take this. None. Right? Zapper doesn't earn anything. Zapper doesn't need this hallway. Night Owl needs this hallway, sure. But Zapper could easily just wait up here because Zapper can control this space before Night Owl can even get to it. Right? Um, but instead, Zapper takes the fight to Night Owl here, and we're going to see that this really doesn't go very great for Zapper. In general, if you have to push into an enemy tracer's space, make sure that you need it. And just try to avoid that if you can, you know, typically, typically there's like two or three routes that you can go to. Try to, try to go to one that the enemy tracer isn't, you know, forcing a duel when you're on the aggressive side is not the play, right? Um, you know, what, what, what a lot of, what a lot of tracers might do is like Zapper could have been hiding right here or something. And, you know, then gotten Night Owl. And, and if that happens, if that, if that were to happen to Night Owl, you know, he gets really low. He should just recall out and then run because there's no way he's going to take, he, he, there's no way he's going to be able to get that duel. Um, but regardless... We see this, and Night Owl, you know, Night Owl instantly wins that, right? It's just disadvantageous for Zapper, right? Um, so now, Night Owl has the advantage, right? Like, Night Owl's basically won the duel. There's no reason to keep forcing it, right? In my opinion, like, 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 unless the duel was to kill, which this one certainly wasn't, it was just to kind of, you know, get the tracer off of you, there's no reason to chase, right? And this is another thing, is, is a lot of tracers just chase the duels randomly. They just run, right? They, they just want to take the duel all the time, but they they just stop prioritizing the more important thing, and we'll get to that in a second, because uh, there's a second mistake here that we're going to talk about. But regardless, all right, now Night Owl makes the exact same mistake, takes the fight to Zapper, right? You know, enters, Z enters Zapper space, and all of a sudden, look, both tracers have used recall. Both tracers made the same mistake, and lost that respective half of the duel because of it. And this is really, really awful, right? Um, you know, now now it's just kind of, you know, Tracer's doing Tracer things. But now we can go over to the second mistake, all right? So the second mistake that nearly every Tracer makes is not prioritizing the setup, all right? Tracer is a very setup-based hero, you know? You have three blinks, all right? And you, you, have, you have basically the get-out-of-death-free death card, probably better than ever in a lot of cases, at least for, like, a single character. Um... You know, you have that, so why not, you know, t take this time to go around, you know, be be very mobile, be all over the place. Um, so here, you know, again, Night Owl forces out Zapper, and this is what I mean about purpose with duels, right? The purpose was just to get Zapper off, right? You don't need to kill Zapper right now, Zapper's not doing anything. Even if you do, right, the, like, the, the fight hasn't even begun, right? It doesn't mean anything, Zapper's gonna get back, right? Right now, what our player Night Owl needs to do is just continue with what he was doing, or what they were doing. Just go here, just go up the staircase, you know? set up, right? It's so, so important to understand why you started doing something. Don't just get distracted with every little thing. You know, obviously, if a kill is completely free, take it. But I would not, I would not be able to say that, that the enemy tracer was, uh, was a free kill. I, I don't think I could confidently say that for any rank. I think 
it doesn't matter what. I would I would much prefer this tracer just continue with the setup, right? Because if this tracer had continued, he's probably right here right now, right? You know, you're you're set up here, and look look where look where the team is. You know, this this could be really good. As soon as this dive comes out from the Winston, he can just go, right? Or they they, they can just go. But instead, we, we have this issue where both tracers are just taking this duel for no reason. You know, it's important to realize Zapper's kind of making a similar mistake, right? Zapper's setup is really long to get to the fight, too, right? Zapper has to go all the way around here. Neither of them are getting any value out of this duel. They're both just kind of wasting time, right? And you should never waste time in Overwatch. You should only do what is necessary and what is best. Our third mistake that a lot of tracers make is they tend to waste quite a bit of time, just generally, right? We, we touched on this a little bit in the last point, but we really get to see it here, where, you know, you can see that the fight's over, right? You have about 20 seconds, right? 20 seconds before anything else is going to be happening in this game, right? Enemy team is cleaning up, and it's just generally a perfect time for this tracer to do something, right? You know, this tracer can go look for an amazing setup. This tracer could go, uh, you know, try to try to assassinate somebody who's who's got left alone in the chaos of the mid-fight, right? Or or just just set up in a place to scout, right? All those are great spots, right? Uh, in my opinion, what a high-level tracer player would do here is grab this health path and then probably try to go um, under here. You know, get set up maybe back here. This is great for scouting. You know, you can see you can see kind of whoever is in is is like up on the bridge or whatever. Scout the enemy team. Um, also, tracers also tracers might just want to go down here, right? This is very solid. Hide in this health pack, very good. Um, you know, just just a setup that would be really hard to do when the enemy team is actually set up normally because they have people with all ears around. You know, they're not focusing on anything else. It's way harder for a tracer to get set up there. That setup gives a great angle. Like, all those setups give a great angle for the engage. They give some great scouting potential. All that's really good. Um, and, you know, if, if you can set up when the fight's chaotic, right, or, like, like after you've lost, obviously, you don't want to be setting up during the fight. But if you can set up when things are getting really chaotic and the enemy team can't actually pay attention to you, that's really good. And that's what I would hope for a lot of tracer players here. But instead, a lot of tracer players do what Night Owl does. And that's that's this. And we just go back to spawn. Like, we're a McCree. You know, it's just like, you, you have so much mobility. And you have a get-out-of-death-free card. Right? You can go for more risky plays. And you can, and like, plus you can just get your stuff done beforehand. So that instead of, like, a lot of tracers, if you, if you were to set up from spawn at the same time your team was setting up, you're going to get there with about one blink. Or, you know, worst case scenario, enemy tracer takes the duel, and then you have no blinks, and you've lost recall by the time you get there. And then you're finally in the fight without resources, right? But here, if you, if you, if, if, if you had gone earlier, right? If, if, if this player had gone earlier, then she's great. She has, they have, they have all three, all three blinks and recall ready for the fight. Perfect. But instead, a lot of Tracer players just kind of go back to their team like they're a Reaper or something, right? You're not a Reaper. It's the most important thing to understand on a Tracer. You are your own separate character, right? You can't just go from frontline. You've got to do other things. And I feel like a lot of Tracer players misunderstand that. They waste a lot of time. They go back to spawn. They don't go behind the enemy team. They just waste time that they could be using all these, all these amazing movement cooldowns to actually go for some kind of setup and set up for the next fight. It's just, it, it's, it's the biggest issue in my opinion. You've got to set up for the next fight. Another mistake that I think a lot of Tracer players tend to make is they tend to be overcommitting in a lot of situations, right? Not to mention they, um, like, they go for something, they get some success out of it, and then they just, they just keep going. Like, they, they've gotten their success, and then they're just like, alright, I'm gonna throw away my life now. Alright? Now, in my opinion, what the, what this Tracer's about to do, this is actually a reasonable play, alright? You know, there's no issue in looking for a one clip, especially, like, this long before the fight, right? Like, this is exactly what I was talking about, like, n like now we're actually sitting up, now we're actually doing something. Uh, you know, like this, like this is, this is way better. This is, this is actually what we're supposed to be doing. Um, and because we have so much extra time, this tracer is actually set up properly. Now, you know, this tracer player can look for a one clip, like, exactly like I just said, you know, they're going to, they're going to look for one and they actually, they don't, they don't quite manage to get it, but their echo finishes off the kill and this looks really good and stuff, right? You know, it's just, it's just a very soft commit. You don't have to like turbo push in or anything, right? Um, but it, it is something to do, right? Like, like, you can just go, you can try to get a kill. If not, you just leave. And it's fine, because, again, you have plenty of time before the team fight. But what happens now? This Tracer continues to commit, right? All this Tracer needs to do is just kite away, because his team's going to be able to go soon. And if this Tracer player wastes all these resources, right, they're not going to be able to go in, and all of a sudden, how much does it matter that you pick the Ana? You effectively picked yourself in the process, because you used all your resources to get that kill, and you're not going to be in the fight, Right? Just go in for a little bit of value. If it works or it doesn't, you still got to get out. You got to be ready for the fight. The fight is the most important part. All right? So now this Tracer's like way overstaying their welcome, and it's going to get that. Yeah. 
is they're pushing they're pushing the tracer and uses recall keeps pushing for some reason and yeah right all of a sudden we just lost all that value that we just had because we, we've been trying to force stuff too much all right if you're doing something pre-fight love it great you're doing something you're 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 you've fixed the mistake that we just talked about don't overdo it all right go for stuff if you don't get it it's okay the most important part is that you're there you're there for the actual fight itself Okay, um, a lot of tracer players go too early uh, and actually hard commit in situations like this, and that's also something I'm going to strongly recommend against you doing. All right, uh, you try to get value if you have time before the fight, but in general, it's way more important to be in the fight. All right, so the last mistake that I want to look at for tracer is what to do with her ultimate because a lot of people just kind of throw it out to get a kill, blah blah blah, right? And that's not necessarily wrong. That's that's literally its thing. But a lot of people just kind of do it wrong. And there, there's mainly two instances that we're going to be looking at of people just completely throwing it. Like, just completely messing up Tracer. Um, and first one is going to be this one right here, right? So, so our Tracer, look at this. Two kills. Fantastic, right? Amazing. Two kills. This is great. This is exactly what you want as Tracer, right? So what should you not do when you're up to in a fight? Maybe use a big ultimate that takes that takes uh, like up to upwards of a minute to get potentially, right? No, we'll we'll do that. This is something a lot of tracers do. This is also something a lot of Genjis do as well, where they like, get three kills and they use blade. But that's beside the point. Just a lot of tracers, they just like they want to keep getting the kills. You know, they, they they see these crazy fresh nuts clips. Like, oh my god, he got three kills and then he threw it. He threw he threw the stylish like ninety degree pulse bomb and then he he, he, he ran away. No. Focus on winning your games, guys. All right. This pulse bomb, this pulse bomb is easily usable to win next fight. But instead, they just use it like this, and it's it's not how you want to be using pulse bomb. Um, and the second one is an instance that I don't believe is actually in this vod, but we can talk about it because I'm sure I'm sure it's easy to describe. What I see so many tracers doing is, you know, like, like th things will be happening, right? Enemy team will be coming back from spawn, and to get a stagger, the tracer will pulse bomb a stagger. This is actually terrible, all right? Um, like, 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 if you're on attack, it's a little bit different, but like, I, I typically see tracers doing this on defense because it's way easier to do on defense. It's terrible to pull someone just coming back from spawn when their team is setting up, right? If their team isn't already, like, fully set up, there's no reason to go for a pulse bomb like that. Because all it does, like, it wastes time. Sure, that's great. How long does it waste? 20 seconds. Is 20 seconds worth a whole 100% in ultimate? No. The most important thing with an ultimate, in my opinion, uh, and this is something that I'm going to talk about quite a bit in this series, um, is that you is that you need to get that refunded, right? So if you're getting a kill with this pulse bomb, it should result in about 100% ult charge gotten back, right? So whether that just means you know killing the other five on their team, right? Like or or you know like enemy team uses an ultimate equal to that, right? So, you know you pulse bomb, let's say enemy team like, like Nano's the person you pulse bomb to save them. Not obviously not saying that's something that happens commonly, but it's an example, right? You got to get that 100% refunded to you. If you're if you're not using an ult like that, it's just a waste, right? So say for example, for instance, the enemy team was just kind of resetting here. You know, cart was way far back. Cart was still at, like the very beginning of, of this point, right? You know, cart was here, um, and our tracer went for a pulse bomb and used this, right? It's not necessarily bad, right? It's it, like it does give them time, but realistically. You can't follow up on that. You've just used the you've just used your pulse bomb. You've you used 100% ult charge, and you get 20 seconds for it. You don't actually get a fight win. You don't actually get that refunded. And now all of a sudden you've lost your potential to win the next fight with it, right? Um, it's just a big thing where you want to make sure that you're not just pulsing people in spawn for style or for staggers, all right? If you want to go for a stagger, go for it without pulse bomb, all right? You're 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 way better off. Obviously, there are certain situations like this one in specific where it would be really good, right? Like like if our tracer had used this pulse bomb instead, you know, like like enemy team is contesting, uh, like you know, just staggering in, and then use the pulse bomb. This would be good because it's actually stopping them from contesting. It's giving you something worth that 100% ult charge, which is you know, capping a point. I would say that's pretty. That's that's pretty darn aren't worth it, right? If you can actually fully cap the point just because of that pulse bomb, that's great. But in a lot of situations, tracers don't do this. They just do it for an extra 20 seconds for nothing, right? And even 20 seconds, 20 seconds is really, really generous in a lot of situations, right? Sometimes, sometimes people can be back in less than, in less than like 15 seconds, you know, like sometimes people are back in 14 seconds. Um, so it's really not always worth it to do, to use a pulse bomb like this. Um, now, this video has been a lot to talk about, so let's let's make let's just give you guys a quick recap because I'm sure it's been kind of difficult. Uh, one, tracer duels, like like we just discussed, tracer duels, 
most important thing is really just making sure that you're not pushing into the enemy tracer space, right? And especially that you're not doing it if you can avoid it. There are certain situations where you have to. You have to force that duel, and that's okay. But there are a lot of situations where enemy tracers just kind of go and just push the enemy tracer for no reason, all right? Unless there's some other advantage to pushing into their space, such as they're not looking at you, you generally shouldn't take a tracer duel like that. Because the moment you do, you're pushing into their space, and that's always worse, all right? Two is setting up, right? So many tracers will just prioritize, um, like, like, so many tracers will just prioritize, like, chasing a kill or, you know, just going back to their team and resetting uh, over actually, like, setting up, right? It's so much more important to just go and set up, right? You've got to prioritize that. Um, and, you know, like, part, part of this can go back to the tracer duel is, like, making sure that you're, that when you're taking a tracer duel, it's actually allowing you to set up. You don't just take a tracer duel for the sake of taking a tracer duel. You take it to allow yourself to set up or to stop the enemy tracer from setting up. If that's not happening, then that's a problem. But even more importantly, um, when you are taking tracer duels like that, if you're stopping them from setting up, you're playing somewhere, uh, you're either playing in the place where they want to set up or somewhere that leads to it so that, you're, so that they're forced to take the duel in your space or you are, um, you are trying to set up around where the enemy tracer is not necessarily forcing that duel. Again, there are times where you have to force that duel and you just have to take those, right? But regardless, taking those duels has to result in either setup or setup denial. Um, so yeah, those are, those are the first two. Um, third one is just wasting time, but we, it, we, we kind of cover it and set up, you know, just don't, don't waste too much time. Um, <clears throat> um, and then right after that is, uh, the pulse bombs, right? Can't be using pulse bombs. Like, like you can't, you can't just be not getting that hundred percent ult charge refunded, right? And if you're already getting a hundred, going to get a hundred percent ult charge, then there's no point in, there's no point in using another one, right? So we have pulse bombs. And then the, um, the last ones, the last thing that we talked about, or it wasn't the last thing, but <laughs> this isn't in order. This is probably, this is honestly more probably in order of importance. Uh, I, I would say, I would say maybe setting up is more important than tracer duels, but I'm sure you guys understand. Um, and then fourth, like I, like we talked about before was, um, you know, not overstaying your welcome pre-fight, right? You try to get some value pre-fight, but if you if you can't get value, then you just leave because, again, it's way more important to actually be part of the fight. And all this, again, leads back to actually being set up, right? Almost all this can lead back to being set up as well because, you know, pulse bombs, um, a great way to set up for the next fight is to pulse bomb one of the enemy team as the fight's starting, and that's, that's just a free fight win, right? So uh, a lot of this kind of just leads back to setups, you know? Everything you do has to lead to setting up on Tracer, and I think it's super, super, super important that everybody learns why they need to focus on all these things to make sure that their setups are perfect. All right? Thank you.